will attempt this reading at 240 words per minute. Give you a few seconds to get ready. I got this from the video of Stephen Avery, number nine. I decided to do it uh, a couple of them by word, uh, this by words per minute. It's hard to read at 240, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Ready? Let's begin. The judge has told you that there is four charges. I'm very, very briefly going to talk about those four because I don't want to reiterate what the judge did. But there are four separate charges that the defendant is charged with. First degree, intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, funneling in the possession of a firearm, and false imprisonment. Now the judge instructed you and my job today in opening statement again is this isn't evidence, but it is the help it is a help for you. It's the cover, if you will. It's the roadmap, it's the overview to talk about the first legal concept that you as a jury to has to understand, and that's the concept being called part being a party to the crime the judge has told you that this can be satisfied either if the defendant committed an offense himself or the defendant aided and abetted in the offense now the first two counts the homicide and mutilation of a corpse are charged as a party of the crime and you will learn at the conclusion of the stake six case six six from now if you fast forward six weeks from now that the jury instructions will tell you if the defendant committed any of the, those elements himself or the defendant aided it or in another or excuse me aided and abetted another in the commission of those offenses that you sh can and should find him guilty now i can't stand up here and predict what the defendant is going to bring you to this case with cross-examination they may encounter or if they even choose to present any kind of in defense nor should I that isn't my job my job is to present our case to present out the physical evidence that we have developed to present the witnesses that we have developed to prove prove our case but remember just remember this concept when it becomes time to deciding whether or not the defendant is guilty the judge has told you something of called the, the el element of offense the state has the burden of proof here the defense has absolutely no burden of proof in the case beyond a reasonable doubt the judge explained to you already that means a reasonable doubt for which a reason can be given when considering all the evidence let me tell you the, what it is not though burden of proof is not beyond all doubt it's not 100 percent. and when we're dealing with the human justice system you can't be expect beyond all doubt or beyond a shadow of a doubt or comments that we sometimes we have heard about that it's beyond a reasonable doubt for which a reason can be given and i'm standing before you members of the jury telling you that i accept this burden i will prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt but we didn't want you going into this case expecting 100 percent or beyond all doubt because there are human factors and dynamics that go into these cases each case the judge has told you has elements of those offenses we're going to go through those in just a minute but also each of the four charges should be considered separately you cannot group them together and decide if he is guilty on all four each of the or none each of the four counts are to be considered separately in fact if there is separate evidence for all four of those counts and finally the defendant is presumed innocent as mr avery sits here before you today because you have not heard any evidence in this case he is presumed by you or should be presumed by you to be innocent however and this is a bit however that presumption disappears at the very moment when the evidence in the case satisfies you beyond a reasonable doubt that he is guilty of that offense that presumption disappears at the very moment that the evidence pr proves that he is guilty count one the judge instructing you has two counts and why i'm telling you this and why i'm showing you them on screen on the powerpoint presentation is because there is serious serious crimes in fact the most serious crimes in the state of wisconsin the legal concepts aren't that complex we're talking about two con things that we have to prove cause the death of somebody and did it intentionally nothing magic about that nothing complex about that and all of you of you should be able to understand that the same thing with mutilation of a corpse just the two elements that he mutilated a corpse and that he did so to conceal a crime that he had committed you will hear the evidence in the in this case about what the crime is he was trying to conceal the crime as you may have already guessed is the first degree to intentional homicide mr avery is also charged with felony in possession of a firearm again two elements that a felony in possession of a firearm that seems obvious and number two that sometime before november 2005 he had convic been convicted of a felony now the judge has told you that the second element is stipulation stipulation means that the facts are agreed by the parties that you can take that as already having been proved beyond a reasonable doubt that mr avery has that felony conviction and it's just that the first element of the office that the state has to prove do you all understand that all right now false imprisonment has
has five separate counts to the offense. He, those five elements are that he confined, restrained. Note, that's in the disjunctive. He either confined or restrained Teresa Howe back intentionally without her consent. He knew he didn't have authority, and he knew he didn't have authority to constrain, re confine, or restrain Ms. Howe back. All right, enough of the civics lesson. Let's talk about what the evidence is going to show on Monday, October the 31st, 2005, at approximately 2.45 p.m., the state intends to prove that the defendant restrained, murdered, and mutilated 25-year-old photographer named Teresa Halbach. We're going to prove to you what happened. We're going to prove to you who committed this crime. We're going to prove to you where it happened. We're going to prove to you specifically that it had happened, and those will prove all of the elements of the offense. What we're not going to prove to you, what the judge already told you, we don't have to, and in fact, we can't prove to you is why. We can't prove the why in a case like this. That's called motive, the reason behind the killing, and what was in Mr. Avery's mind when he decided when deciding to kill this person, this lovely young woman. I'm going to introduce you to you, somebody, this remarkable young woman who was 25 years of age. She was single. She was a freelance photographer. She had her own photography business, and that was, although in its infancy, doing quite well. And I will remind you several times during this opening statement and throughout the trial, I will remind you that we're talking about some a real person here, talking about somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, a lot of people's friend. Teresa Halbeck had her whole life in front of her, and the evidence is going to show that on Halloween 2005, and that all ended that all ended at the hands of defendant Stephen Avery. The words that's in this is reiterate, first degree, intentional, possession, false, imprisonment, jury, offense, aided, abetted, opening statement, overview, concept, Mutilation, corpse, firearm, instructed, commission, party to the crime, elements, guilty, cross-examination, defense, prosecutor, physical evidence, concept, burden of proof, 100%, beyond a shadow of a doubt, members of the jury, justice system, dynamics, separately, Separate, counts, in fact, innocent, presumed, presumption, PowerPoint, intentionally, conceal, mutilation of a corpse, prosecution, restrained, motive, convicted, years of age, photography, infancy, remind, Halloween, Stephen Avery members of the jury.